and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. I'm Ellen and today we are going to make an all natural triple butter cold processed soap. Um, I've shared this particular recipe before in another video. I'll leave a link uh, either in a card or down below and I'll share it again today. This soap recipe uses a luxurious blend of cocoa butter, kupawasu, and kokum butter. It's just so good. I had to do it again. Um, and it's gonna be all natural today because we're gonna be using essential oil of sandalwood to fragrance this soap, or you could leave it unscented, but I love earthy scents. The sandalwood is gonna be perfect in here. Um, and sandalwood essential oil soaks really well in cold processed soap. And then for the colorants, um, I, I Hesitate to use this because I have not found this available any longer. This is Australian Red Reef Clay, and I think they stopped mining for it, which um, I'm sure there's environmental reasons for that, but it's absolutely phenomenally gorgeous, and I do have some left, so one of the color swirls is gonna be this red clay, and I, I will try to find a link if it's even available anymore. If it's not, I'm so sorry. Um, you could use a red kale and clay or something, but you're not gonna get that vibrant color. It's just so good. So Australian Red Reef Clay is gonna be one color, and then I have this beautiful indigo powder from Brambleberry, gorgeous, and this will be the other color. So. These two together, so pretty with a sandalwood scent and those butters. This bar is gonna be just luxurious. I'm so excited to make this. I haven't decided if I'm gonna do a goat milk or a buttermilk. We'll do something with the liquid portion of this just cause I wanna take it right up over the top. But I've gotta get all my ingredients pulled together and let's come back and make some all natural triple butter soap. All right, we are back and it's time for the oil portion of our soap. But first, let me show you what I've got going on off to the side. This is my indigo powder that I have rehydrating in some warm water. Um, I did one teaspoon of indigo powder to one tablespoon of water and I'm just letting it sort of absorb there. And I also have my red reef clay also kind of hydrating in water. Um, and again, one teaspoon of clay to one tablespoon of water. So those are prepped off to the side. And here is my essential oil blend that I've put my kale and clay in here. People that use essential oils regularly in their soaps, I've watched a lot of those videos and they say that the kale and clay in the essential oils helps to anchor the scent. So we're gonna give it a try. Um, and I ended up doing a little bit of citrus uh, essential oil in here with the sandalwood because I thought it really heightened the scent. I, I wanted it more complex. And I'm doing my essential oils at a rate of 3% in this soap batch, just so you know. So these are all ready and off to the side. Now let's get to the oils. And uh, I'm gonna go really quick through this because I have another video that I went really step-by-step step, uh, in the same recipe. This is the luxurious triple butter recipe. A lot of my butters are from Natural Bulk Supplies and I have a discount code for them down below. So what we've got going on in here is 10 ounces of coconut oil or 248 grams of coconut oil. And then I have two ounces or 57 grams of cocoa butter. So let me tear my scale out. I'm just double checking my measurements here. And I have two ounces of kupawasu butter or 57 grams. So we're gonna tear out, double check our rates. All right. And the last butter is kokum butter, and I have two ounces or 57 grams of kokum butter going in here. So those are all the hard oils and butters, and I like to gently melt these down, and then we'll come back and add our liquid oils in here. All right, we are back, and it's time for our liquid oils, and the first one is castor oil, and I need two ounces or 57 grams of castor in here. And the next oil is almond oil, sweet almond oil. Again, two ounces or 57 grams. All right, and last but not least is olive oil. And the prices on olive oil have gone up so much. It's kind of heartbreaking, but this is the one from Costco. It was just the best price I found at the time. So. Olive oil is going in. I need 15 ounces or 425 grams of olive oil. All 
right, and now it's time for soap additives. Since the kale and clay is already mixed off in the essential oils, I'm not gonna be adding that in here, but I am gonna add some coconut milk powder and my colloidal oats. And I'll be adding about one tablespoon of those in here. So one tablespoon of oats, this is a two tablespoon scoop, so about half. And the same with the coconut milk, about one teaspoon, or sorry, one tablespoon of coconut milk. It's a little clumpy, so I'm gonna blend this really well to let it absorb and to not have any clumps. <laughs> so there goes the coconut milk. And let's get this all blended up and we'll get to making soap. Are back and here is the lye water already but before we get to that I'm gonna go ahead and add my kale and clay and essential oils in here um, because everything I've read citrus essential oils and sandalwood are not supposed to accelerate trays <laughs> really hoping that's true and I want to get the kale and clay and everything blended in here so I'm taking a bit of a risk so uh, let's all hope together that this doesn't do anything very strange um, and that would be a happy thing. <laughs> I guess I'm a bit of a gambler, right? I like to take risks, I don't know. If you're new to soap making, here's what I suggest. You hold off on your fragrance or essential oils until you get a nice trace and all your colored pots are blended and then added in last. That's the, that's the recommended way to do it. Why I don't do that, you know, <laughs> I don't know. I think it's because I have forgotten to add my fragrances one too many times and so I'm kind of gun shy about that. I really think that's why I like to do this. Anyway, this is the lye water. It does have cane sugar, which is a lather booster. Sugar helps create lather. It has tussed silk fibers and some sodium lactate. So that's what's going on in here. This is five ounces of lye and 10 ounces of distilled water. So that's 141 grams of sodium hydroxide and 278 grams of distilled water. And we're just gonna pulse this and hope that it doesn't speed up and we'll get our colors blended. I have my hanger off to the side in case I can do a hanger swirl. Mm. Gosh, that sandalwood and citrus smells amazing. I'm really hoping it sticks around in the soap because it's nice, really nice.
are back. It has been 48 hours since I made this. I got busy and couldn't come down and tend to it. And I had a little extra batter here. I'm still trying to figure out the exact ounces I need for this mold. Um, anyway, so I had this little soap flower made and I am loving it. I'm so happy to say that I can still smell the essential oil blend really, really well. So I'm hoping it's gonna stick around. I love this indigo. These colors together to me look like Ralph Lauren polo, that sort of denim blue and that deep red. I don't know, That's it's giving me polo vibes. I'm loving it. So let's get this out of the mold and see how the swirls came out on the inside. with the lovely Olga and I decided to use my multi-bar cutter and we'll chat through the swirls um, but I want to do a lather test on this and I will tell you why let me grab my washcloth yes sure or the day when I made this soap and I was cleaning up look at that red reef clay it stained my washcloth so I want to do a lather test on this and see how uh, colorful the lather is and I would definitely recommend if you're going if you find red reef clay <laughs> and you're using it um, to not to be heartbroken if your washcloths get stained. So we're going to do a lather test and see how this comes out. So I figured we'd go, you know, not super quick, but it was a toss up between my single bar cutter and the multi bar. But I wanted to bring Olga out today. So let's get in here and see how this is looking on the inside. It was a very thin trace when I poured it. Those essential oils behaved beautifully. There we go. Oh my golly. <laughs> Look at that. Loving, loving, loving. Wow. You all look at that. Oh my goodness, these are making me happy. I say that a lot, but you know what? Soaping brings me joy. I hope it brings you joy too. So I poured the colors on, st staggered back and forth, but by the time I brought my hanger through, it's pretty mishmashed up, but oh wow, those swirls are hitting it. Mm, and the essential oils smell fabulous. So all natural, triple butters, essential oils, these little soaps I think are powerhouses. Oh, let's see if we can get a swirl going. I will do swirls at the end. All right, let's see. Oh yeah, so pretty. Oh, I'm delighted with these swirls. I'm delighted with the scent. Everything about this is just making my day. And I went back and forth if I wanted to do goat milk, buttermilk, but ultimately we did coconut milk and I'm so glad. I feel like it just goes with the whole everything to me. I think the coconut milk was a perfect fit. And I had a question on YouTube here. Somebody asked, and it's a really good question. When you put a powdered milk in your soap, do you list the ingredient of coconut milk powder or just coconut milk? And there are a few varying opinions out there, but at the end of the day, when you reconstitute a powder, it's now that milk. And so I don't think you have to write the word powder. You can if you want, but I would just say coconut milk on my ingredients because you know, you're mixing it with when the lye is a liquid and the oils and you're reconstituting it back into a milk. So whether or not you write the word powder is totally up to you. If I use a heavy cream powder, um, you can just write heavy cream on the label. So those are my thoughts on labeling. So if you have a different opinion than that, please let us know in a friendly manner. I would love to hear what you have to say about that. But as far as my research goes, you don't have to write powder, you just write the milk. So that's all I have to say on that. And these swirls are just taking my breath away. I'm so thrilled. It's weird making little batches for me. It's kind of fun. I feel like I'm, you know, starting all over again. I'm just having a lot of fun making these teeny batches. And now I've got to get to piping soap in the near future and get back to doing some fun tops. I just have been doing scoopies with this little mold because, you know, it's that sort of honeymoon phase. I'm getting to know my new mold and making my smaller batches and how they behave. But now we'll get back into the groove of things. And um, wow. <laughs> I'm just so thrilled and that indigo powder is beautiful now the indigo powder doesn't 
change the color of the lather. If we do have a lather up issue, it's gonna be that red reef clay that's, that's being colorful. All right, so I'm gonna wait a few hours, come back in and bevel and stamp, and then we will come back for a lather test and talk a little bit more about the finish and how that red reef clay is behaving in the final lather up. So we'll see you in a little bit. back for the lather test I have my stained washcloth here and I had a thought this was when I was cleaning out the containers the water and the clay so I'm wondering if the saponification I will use a clean spot on the stained rag here to see um, if the saponification makes a difference in the staining but let's get in here and give it a lather test and see I already know I love this recipe um, I've done the, this little luxurious triple butter recipe before and it's delightful in fact I have a bar in my shower from the first time doing it I'm rolling this a lot to see okay so I'm seeing a little bit of pink in the lather but it's not real pronounced a little bit of pink in the water not bad all right let's give this a lather test and see my hands are kind of pink because the water's warm, but you can definitely see there's just a teeny pink tinge to the bubbles, if you can see it. It's kind of um, like calamine lotion color. So anyway, the lather's divine. Let's take our washcloth here. I'm gonna find a clean spot on the washcloth and let's rub it on here and see. Okay, so there, I've got the Red Reef Clay Soap on here rubbing it in and let's see if it'll come out it comes out that's interesting okay so the saponification red reef clay comes out of the washcloth but when i was cleaning up my jars and dishes the water and clay stained my washcloth that's what that is so i find that very interesting let's try one more time just to double check so while I'm lathering this up, <laughs> I wanted to mention that if you have been enjoying my videos and the recipes and all that, and you wanna keep seeing good stuff, please don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I looked at my analytics. Okay, here we go. This is the saponified red reef. I looked at my analytics and 51% of you all watching are not subscribed to my channel. So do me a solid and subscribe. I'm trying to hit 100,000. I sure would love to do that. Look at that, it comes out. So the saponified red reef clay comes out. I've got two things going on. Anyway, I'm trying really hard to hit 100,000 and get my silver button. And when I get that, I'm gonna share one of my Ellen Ruth soap recipes that I have not shared yet. I'm thinking of maybe my traditional triple butter or my traditional shaving soap. I've never shared those recipes on this channel. And I'm thinking about cracking up the vault opening up the gates and sharing one of my proprietary blends when I hit the 100K. So if you're enjoying the videos and you have not subscribed, please hit that subscribe button. I really appreciate it. Oh, I am loving these, loving the swirls. And I'm so glad that the clay washes out <laughs> after it saponifies. You can see the water's a little pink here too, but it does wash off. That is good to know, right? I like that. So thank you so much for joining me today. And I do hope you give the recipe a try and I hope you have a wonderful day.